All right, guys, let's ask the question, was BlizzCon enough for Overwatch? Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stadosa, and you better believe everything I'm about to say because I've got glasses on, ladies and gentlemen, because apparently I'm blind and I need glasses, although I usually wear contact lenses, but my contact lenses are not here, so I've got to wear glasses, whatever. It's cool. Right then, let's talk about this because... Um, yeah, um, now I think the new hero sort of week has died off, as, as generally happens. Is this actually enough? What the hell is going on with Blizzard? Well, one thing I want to show you guys to begin with, and this is not entirely related to Overwatch, but it's related to Blizzard as a whole. I mean, you guys probably remember the, the whole um, Diablo disaster at BlizzCon. Uh, this is the share price of Activision Blizzard. You can see that on the 8th of November, um, this bad boy dropped from $62 down to $54. That's a huge drop. That is the market reacting to Blizzard's mobile game announcement and all of the sort of bad press and PR around that. It's a bit more complicated than that, but it shows you that Blizzard are kind of struggling. So what the hell are they doing? Now, Blizzard are a massive company, right? They're not stupid. They're obviously working on stuff. Now, some of the things that they were saying is they're focusing more on mobile game development, which is not exactly great to PC gamers or console gamers. It's like, cool, we don't mind that, but we also want our major PC games. So how does this all relate to Overwatch? What's going on? Well, I've said in previous videos that the team must be working on something major because they haven't really done anything for the last year. Now, that's not entirely true, is it? Because they've worked on the World Cup viewer, there's been Overwatch League stuff, there's been new heroes, there's been balance changes, but this, uh, the, the, the special seasonal events have all been the same, and that is the problem a lot of players have got. Now, I'm going to... Hand over heart, I'm going to ask you guys a serious question, and I'm going to answer this question as well, um, but I want you guys to answer it in the comments below. So, do you play Overwatch? <laughs> this is ridiculous, right? Do you play Overwatch, or do you just come back for seasonal events? Do you watch uh, YouTube channels like mine, so you kind of, you know what's going on with Overwatch, but you don't play it, you just want to keep in the loop. If something major happens, then you might come back. Well, I'll tell you what happens to me. So... Um, yesterday, I got the chance to play Overwatch pretty much all day because um, I had no work, let's say, to do, but I just wanted to sit down and play Overwatch. Um, first time, like, since before BlizzCon, I've had the chance to just sit there and really grind out Overwatch. And it was the same old thing. It's random games. Hey, this is a good game. Oh, this is a bad game. Hey, this is a good game. Oh, this is a bad game. This is a bad game. This is a bad game. This is a good game. This is a good game. It's a bad game. It's a good game. It's just too random, right? And it makes me not want to play the game. That's the inherent problem with Overwatch. So when I look at the list I've got here um, of things which are a bit of an issue. Let's just go over what was announced at BlizzCon. So, new hero, Ash, uh, and Bob, although Bob isn't really a hero, he's just the ultimate ability. Cool hero, right, but the issue is with hero launches, they only really apply to some of the fan base, because if you're not a hit scan player, if you're not a DPS player, well then you don't care about Ash. You're like, well, I'm a tank player, that, that's fine, whatever. You don't care, it's not enough to make you come back and play the game, that's the big issue. Obviously, it's not feasible to launch heroes in every category all of the time. Although, I think it is feasible to launch more heroes than they do per year. I would like to see that. Um, we get the animated short. It's cool, right? Animated shorts have got... Uh a bit of an effect that sometimes we don't actually take into consideration. They go out into popular culture. The actual core of the game, and you guys watching this video, might not be so much sort of like casuals who never really play Overwatch. You obviously play Overwatch, but the animated shorts go out there and you start seeing things like um, react channels on YouTube, like massive channels where people are just reacting to the trailers. Oh my God, this is amazing. They're not gamers, but those are little examples of the way this goes out into popular culture. They're great. They're awesome advertisements for the game. But as a player of the game, it's like, hey, cool, it's cinematic. That gives a little bit more backstory about McCree. Again, it's backstory. It's nothing pushing the story forward. And it's kind of like, Meh. okay. Then the other thing we get is the World Cup viewer. Now, the World Cup viewer is actually really, really good. But again, this is a problem with it not really applying to most of the player base. I really like it, and I think it's a huge announcement. Like, on paper, in terms of all the announcements at BlizzCon, actually, for me, this is a major, major announcement. Probably one of the best announcements, because it means that most likely, going forward into Overwatch League Season 2, we'll be able to do this, and it means I'll be able to download all the games, I'll be able to make loads of crazy content. Also, I'll probably be able to get replays off you guys in the future and make amazing versions of Overanalyzed, and loads of other stuff. Like, not just that, you can do, like, loads of stuff with this. So, as a content creator... This is awesome. But the issue is, as a standard player of the game, as a normal player that might not be interested in esports, why do you want to go back and watch the esports players? You don't. What do you want? You want new game modes. You want new reasons to play the game. Not reasons to watch more videos. You want to play the game. That's the big issue I've got here. So, 
what is the problem and how do they fix this? This is the big issue, right? And, and was BlizzCon enough? I don't think it was, right? BlizzCon was very quiet for Overwatch. Now, we can't expect Overwatch to have massive BlizzCon announcements every single year. One of the things we were hoping for is an expansion announcement. This was cited, I believe, in uh, Goldman Sachs, some sort of financial report they put out saying, oh, we think there's an Overwatch uh, expansion coming at some point. But their terminology they used could have just referred to a new hero, right? That's an expansion to Overwatch. That's okay. This is the big kicker for me. Um, when Jeff makes comments like this, now, if, this is, if Jeff actually said this, by the way, this is reported on Kotaku, Kotaku um, but they basically said that Jeff um, said to them that they are working on stuff which we will see in the near future. So most likely into next year, which is pretty big. And it will be clear why the team have been quiet. What is that? Is that an expansion? Is that something to breathe life back into this game? Now, I did touch on the Activision Blizzard stock at the start of this video. But one thing I do want to talk about now is a thing called uh, MAU. This is monthly active users. It is down for Overwatch and it is apparently at its lowest point it's ever been at. This is according to the financial reports where they talk about size of the player base. It's down overall for Activision Blizzard, but it's down for Overwatch as well. And this is no surprise because when I look around at the community and I see a lot of community sentiment, you do get the feeling that people are just playing Overwatch for the skins, maybe to check out the new event. But the issue is, right, you don't necessarily care about the events now because they're not new. It's the same old event. I think I played Junkenstein's Revenge for about 15 minutes and then that was it. The only reason I played it longer was to record footage for the YouTube channel. That's literally it, all right? I had no incentive to go back and play that. I don't care about the achievements. Yeah, the skins, some of the skins were nice, but you just get them from playing the game anyway. You don't necessarily have to play the events, although you can play the arcade and get them slightly faster. Or, well, faster than loot boxes anyway. Uh, what's in the loot box could be anybody's guess. Um, but yeah, there's all these issues with Overwatch, and it really, really irks me because I look at this game and like, I mean, Shit, look at me. Look at all this behind me. Look at it. Like, I've covered this game since it began. Like, this is... Uh, it's got to be going on for three years now since the closed beta, since when I started making content on this game. And I look at it and I think, you need to do something, guys. And I hope that they realize that as well. And I'm pretty sure they do. The biggest problem I've got with Blizzard, and this just goes across all of their franchises, they never tell you what they're doing. And I've got no idea why they see this as such a bad thing. I mean, look at the Diablo thing. I know you guys might not be Diablo fans, but the Diablo Immortal announcement was catastrophically bad because they come out and go, uh, hey guys, yo, you got phones, don't you? Hey, hey, game, phone game, see you next time. There was nothing. They could have phrased that or, or built that presentation in such a better way. They could have said, here's our mobile game. Here's our Switch game. And by the way, here's the splash screen for Diablo 4. Or here's the Diablo 4 logo. Or some sort of, you know, Diablo Next game or whatever. That's all they had to do. They don't have to show you footage. They don't to, I mean, just like Elder Scrolls did. Just like Bethesda did. Uh, that was beautiful, right? That's a good. We all know, oh my God. And then they showed a Starfield after that and whatever. But I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here. But it was not great, right? I'd like to know what the hell is going on with Overwatch. Imagine if we knew the replay tool system was being worked on last year well i say last year it's this year a few months ago right let's say five five months ago when i think when i look at my channel i was making a lot of videos like oh my god you know we need replays or replays coming on if we knew they were coming it wouldn't be as sort of moany you know it'd be like oh yeah we know this is coming what i would really kill for and like i doubt blizzard will ever do this because of their stupid philosophy of we're never going to tell you what we're doing until it's done and then we're going to go hey is a production timeline for Overwatch. If they came out to me and said, Sty, not, no, not just to me, they put a blog post out and they're like, bang, here you go. We're working on this, 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 and this, right? That's what we're working on. You could go back into this and say, oh, oh this feature's delayed because of this reason. This feature's canceled. I'd love it. I would be like, right, I can see where this game's going. I know what's happening because right now I feel like I'm out in the dark. So, one thing I want to end this video on is the whole random nature of competitive and the lack of features that, that we don't have that we think we should have. Now, the biggest issue in the game right now is not being able to play the hero you want to play or the role you want to play. It's not necessarily hero because most of the time you get to play the hero you want to play. Uh, the problem is you might go in thinking, right, I'm going, okay, that's not true, is it? That's just complete crap. This is what was happening to me yesterday and this is happening to you guys if it's happening to me. I go into a game and I want to select, um, let's say I select Anna, right? But then nobody picks a tank. And I'm like, guys, we need a tank. Everybody ignores me. And so we're playing without a tank. We literally have no tank. We have one healer and the rest are just DPS. It's like, come on, guys, what's going on? Or there are examples where I maybe go in and I pick, uh, 
DPS and we've got a tank and then the tank just swaps off the tank. I've seen this happening a lot, right? So that they'll select the main tank at the start of the game. As soon as they die, that's it. I'm not playing tank no more. And I know why these players are doing it because they're not tank players because they're trying to fill the role. They feel everything's collapsed and then they're like, whatever, I'm just playing DPS and the game gets thrown. I do not want to play Overwatch competitive. I play it. Well, I say that. I play it for hours every day, but I play it and... It's making me not want to play the game. So this is a massive issue that they've got to solve. And I hope to God they're working on this. Like, we, we know that the social features uh, are being worked on. What could that... Is that guilds? Like, social features could mean anything. But the LFG system is cool, but doesn't really work, does it? Because it's like playing Overwatch on hard mode. You're going up against stacks of other people that might have played together a lot. We know that most of the time when you play LFG, it's basically... you you go into the thing, you find the group, you've got your microphone on, they look at your profile, they go, okay, you're a tank player, whatever, we need you. You go into the game, you lose the game, everyone disbands. Nobody ever stays together, do they, for LFG? I, I, it's very rare. All right, rant over, ladies and gentlemen. BlizzCon wasn't enough. We need to know what you're doing, guys, with Overwatch, because we kind of feel like we're out in the dark a little bit. That being said, as I've said on the, the last couple of videos on the channel, there are things coming, like we will be looking at the World Cup stuff with some of the UK players, hopefully. Um, there'll be more in-depth kind of stuff looking at the World Cup games. There will be stuff on Ash as well, because I think Ash is a fun hero. But again, it doesn't solve the problem I said at the start of this video, where not everybody's going to care because it's like a high skill hit scan hero and people might want to support. You know, you might be a sport player and you don't care about Ash. You know, you're like, well, who cares? Ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I'm going to leave it that, guys. I'm in Silo, so this is Unit Lost. If you enjoyed the video, then like the video. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, which is at Stylosa on Instagram, because I've been trying to do uh, Instagram stuff. Also, I can't stop looking at myself in the little preview on my camera. I don't, it doesn't look like me. Catch you on the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Toodaloo. <laughs> I can't see.